Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. My dear viewers, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is your host, Riyad Orzazi, and I welcome you back into another episode of Reflections of Ramadan. We were talking about uh, 24 hours in the life of, uh, of a Muslim, Muslima, and how to live you know, uh, Ramadan from day until, let's say, evening. Um, we talked about, you know, some of the benefits of uh, coming early or being early in the masjid. Uh, some of the benefits like uh, attending uh, the, uh, you know, the first row, printing the first row, and the benefits or the rewards that you would get or that, uh, by praying in the first row. Uh, we talked about attending uh, the takbirat al-ihram or witnessing the takbirat al-ihram, which is the takbira, you know, when the imam, you know, says Allahu Akbar and the benefits of uh, being there when the Imam says so. We talked about uh, being in the uh, uh, right-hand side of the row and reward of actually uh, being on the right-hand side of the row. Uh, we talked about the dua that one would make between Adhan and Iqama, which is uh, dua mustajab. So we talked about you know, those things and then we moved into, let's say, you know, from, you know, from Fajr, repeating after the Mu'addin when you hear Adhan, uh, and, and the reward of uh, repeating after the Mu'addin and the reward of uh, uh, those who uh, uh, make that dua after the Adhan. And then after you pray the Sunnah, then you pray in the Fajr, uh, and then you sit in your place with your toes pointing towards the Qibla still uh, as the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, his way, uh, uh, and making the dua uh, which we explained um, and also the staying in, in, in your place of musalla, in your place of the prayer, until the sun, the sun uh, goes up. And we talked about the ajr or the reward uh, that one would get um, by being in that musalla, in your place of prayer, until the sun goes up, which is the reward of one hajja and one umrah, one hajja and performing hajja and umrah, tam matan, matan, tam matan. You know, the fact that you stay there in your place of musalla until the sun goes up, you will get the reward of hajja and umrah. And then after uh, the sun goes up, you know, you head back to your home. We talked about, you know, again, like I said, you know, it's case by case basis, those who have to go to work or those who maybe have to go back home or whatnot. So then we said after, you know, let's say around 10 o'clock or so, you need to get ready to go and pray uh, the Salat al-Awwabin. And we explained, the, you know, the Salat al-Awwabin as it in two rak'ah or four rak'ah, uh, which is a very beloved Salat of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. And then, we talked about the uh, once you pray, once you pray this uh, this four rak'ah, then you know now it's almost uh, dhuhr time. You get ready to go and pray dhuhr. If you are close, if your work is let's say is by the masjid, you get ready to go to the masjid. So you make wudu and then you go to your masjid or to your musalla. Do you have to make wudu? We said it's preferable that you make wudu before going to the masjid. Why? Because the hadith of the Prophet that says if he performs wudu in his home and then uh, he goes towards the masjid for every step, for every step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipe out one of his bad deeds, uh, uh, grant him one hasana, and then elevate his status, inshallah ta'ala, in Jannah. Now that you are inside the masjid, you go to the masjid to pray dhuhr. Sisters, you may want to pray home if you like. Uh, but the Prophet used to say, لا تمنعوا إماء الله من مساجد الله. Do not prevent the women from going to the masjid. If they want to go to the masjid, let them go to the masjid. Right? They can get the ajr, inshallah ta'ala, of the jama'ah as well. Yes, it is preferable that they pray home, but if they, you know, if they like to go to the masjid, especially in Ramadan, you know, that as well, inshallah ta'ala, and especially the month of Ramadan, so that they can go with the Muslims and, and benefit from the blessings that actually are in the environment of the masajid in, in this blessed month of Ramadan. So here you are, you go inside the masjid uh, with your wudu, and then um, you hear the adhan, let's say, and then you repeat again after the mu'addin. 
and then you pray the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith narrated by Umm Habiba. Umm Habiba, she narrates in the hadith reported by in the Sahih al-Tirmidhi uh, and Sahih uh, Ibn Majah, uh, classified as Sahih by Shaykh al-Admani rahmatullah alayhi, that the Prophet ﷺ says, whosoever prays for rak'ah, before the Dhuhr and for the Ka'a after the Dhuhr, Haramahullahu ala nar. Allah will prevent him from entering hellfire. This is Hadith Sahih. So you get to pray, you know, pray for or four, or even, you know, there's some discrepancies amongst Ahl al Ilm. Some say, you know, you can pray two and two, or four and two, or uh, two and four. So, any rates, you, you, you pray the Sunnah, you know, preferably, you know, four after the, before uh, Dhuhr, and then you, as you finish praying the Sunnah of Dhuhr, and then you sit waiting for the uh, for the prayer and remember the hadith of the prophet muhammad وسلم, who says whosoever sits waiting for the salah he is like he is in the salah as if he's in the prayer so you will get the ajr of being in the prayer you know although you're just waiting for the salah to be called you're still getting the ajr of of praying and do not forget from the you know the fact that your dua is mustajab between adhan and iqama here's another opportunity for you why because you came in early alhamdulillah Remember, you came in early, so you're benefiting from all these blessings, alhamdulillah. You know, you've been productive here. Really, you've been so productive because you want to accumulate as many hasanat as you can, as many good rewards as you can. So here you are, you stay, alhamdulillah, you're making dua uh, between adhan and qama, and then the imam comes in, and then you pray with the imam, and after the imam finishes the salah, you go again through the same, you know, uh, adhkar that we uh, said earlier, after Salat al-Fajr, you know, you may, you may want to utilize, uh, use the book called uh, Husn al-Muslim, the fortress of the Muslim, that's got the sound a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad uh, that he used to say, the adhkar that he used to say after the salah. And then once you finish, you pray the sunnah again after the duhr, you know, four rak'at after duhr or two, depending on, uh, you know, your time or availability. So you pray that and then you head towards, uh, head towards maybe, you know, again, if you want to go back to work, if you have to go to work, or maybe you want to go back home. This is again, case by case basis. Once you finish your salah and then you go back, let's say you go back to work, you'll always remember constantly in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're fasting. And remember what we said, it's not only you as a person that you're fasting, but your eye, your sight is fasting. Your hearing is fasting. Your tongue is fasting. You're not talking about haram. You're not looking at haram. You're not hearing and listening to haram. Music? Oh, well, I'm sorry, you know, why? <laughs> Listen to Quran instead. Don't filter yourself with this, you know, stuff that you may not benefit from. Listen to something that will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to the Quran, making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, at work, you could be at work working, and yet you're, you know, constantly, you know, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Planting trees in Jannah. Right? So you are. And then again, you're getting uh, closer to the time of Asr, you get ready one more time, you know, do your wudu, and head for the masjid to pray Asr in in jama'ah, this is in case the masjid is close by, uh, and alhamdulillah, you're, you're, or you can have maybe like a musalla in your work, if that's more convenient for you. Uh, then you go to your musalla, and then you pray, you know, uh, asr, you're gonna, can, you go in early, so that you, you get to pray maybe for rak'ah before asr, and then uh, you pray with the jama'ah. Remember, the praying with the jama'ah, the ajr that you get is 25, and according to the hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, 25 to 27. Other than, you know, if you were to pray by yourself, you get one azr, but if you were to pray in, you know, in jama'ah, you will get the azr of 25, and this is in Ramadan. So that's multiply, you know, in multifold. So that's only again in Ramadan. So you pray, and then this is the time where maybe some of you have to go back home, or some of you have to maybe go back to your, to your work, but now it's almost time for Maghrib, because this is Asr and Maghrib. Let's say you want to go back home, you know, here we are with your family. If you know you're tired, you want to rest. In fact, it is not prescribable to sleep between Asr and Maghrib. But if you're so tired and you have to, uh, if you have to, you have to. But again, try to leverage that time because you're fasting here, right? And then it's about time for Maghrib. And remember, you have to recite the Quran, especially in Ramadan. The ajr of the recitation of the Qur'an. 
as the Prophet used to do, as the Sahaba used to do, as the Ahl Salaf from the pious predecessors used to do. In the month of Ramadan, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmed, they used to stop everything they used to do, like in terms of lecturing and whatnot, and they used to focus in the recitation of the Quran in the month of Ramadan. Every one of us have to complete the recitation of the Quran at least once in Ramadan. Well, if I'm new to Islam, I don't know, you know, then just bring a book and then you can read. You can read. If it's difficult for you, yes, you know, you don't know how to read Arabic, you can read in English or in your uh, native language. But those who can read Arabic, those who, alhamdulillah, can recite the Quran, they have to, you have to. You don't want to miss out on the opportunity of completing the recitation of the Quran at least once in Ramadan. And that's the best time, you know, uh, uh, after Fajr, or before Fajr, and then before Maghrib. So you decide that, you know, after the, you know, the, the Asr, the Adkar of the Masa, the night Adkar, and then the recitation of the Quran, and then you bring your family, you get together, you know, and let's say you want to go and break your fast outside, maybe in the masjid. Here's a tip for all of you. Have some dates with you at any time. Let's say you want to break your fast in your home, and then there's some Muslims around, you know, that don't live too far. Let's say you are in a Muslim country, or even a non-Muslim country. Have some dates with you. So you want to go to the masjid, and break your fast with the Muslims in the masjid? You go to the masjid, and then before people break their fast, you go and you give them that date. Akhi, please, could you break your fast with this date? Allah. Everybody who break their fast with that date that you have given them, you get the ajr. Easy, very simple. Even you go outside your home and then you find some Muslims that you may know, Akhi, please take this date and break your fast with it. Easy, ajr, ajr. You're a businessman, aren't you? You want to get a lot of reward, don't you? So here's easy. Just, you know, some dates and here and there. This is if you can, but if you, let's say you're breaking your fast at home with your family, so you bring your family together and get ready for Maghrib. And, you know, uh, maybe half an hour or so before Maghrib or so, get together and then start making duha. Allah. Why duha? Because duha, you're not only fasting. You're fasting and you're about to break your fast. You have so many chances of getting your duha to be accepted right there. So get involved with, you know, the ad'iyah and the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know, I know the diseases out there. I know some sisters who call and complain about their husbands and husbands who complain about their sisters who are addicted to these movies of Hollywood and Bollywood and Shollywood and Hollywood and whatnot. But you are in Ramadan. This is Ramadan. You don't have time for that. Do you? Or you do? Well, let me, you know, make you think again. Akhi. No, Ukhti, please. Don't waste your time. Let's say you want to go and break your fast outside, maybe in the masjid. Here's a tip for all of you. Have some dates with you at any time. Let's say you want to break your fast in your home, and then there's some Muslims around, you know, that don't live too far. Let's say you are in a Muslim country, or even a non-Muslim country. Have some dates with you. So you want to go to the masjid and break your fast with the Muslims in the masjid? You go to the masjid, and then before people break their fast, you go and you give them that date. Akhi, please, could you break your fast with this date? Allah. Everybody who break their fast with that date that you have given them, you get the ajr. Easy, very simple. Even you go outside your home and then you find some Muslims that you may know, Akhi, please take this date and break your fast with it. Easy, ajr, ajr. You're a businessman, aren't you? You want to get a lot of rewards, don't you? So here's easy. Just, you know, some dates and here and there. This is if you can, but if you, let's say you're breaking your fast at home with your family, so you bring your family together and get ready for Maghrib. And, you know, uh, maybe half an hour or so before Maghrib or so, get together and then start making duha. Allah. Why duha? Because duha, you're not only fasting. You're fasting and you're about to break your fast. You have so many chances of getting your du'a to be accepted right there. So get involved with, you know, the ad'iyah and the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know, I know the diseases out there. I know some sisters who call and complain about their husbands and husbands who complain about their sisters who are addicted to these movies of Hollywood and Bollywood and Shollywood and Hollywood and whatnot. But you are in Ramadan. This is Ramadan. You don't have time for that. 
Do you? Or you do? Well, let me, you know, make you think again. Okay. No, Ukhti, please. Don't waste your time. You're here, you know, Ramadan is just only a few days, remember? Ayyam and Ma'dudat. So take advantage, leverage of this time. And make lots of dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and lots of du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here you are, you know, and I know, and I know out there, you know, these uh, TV stations and whatnot, subhanAllah, they have Ramadan programs. They wait until Ramadan and then they start podcasting these new movies and commentaries and whatnot. And you've got our friends and brothers and sisters cooped up from the TV from morning until evening. Those who don't work and those who work, they come back and then, okay, what's new? Oh, this movie. And then it's Ramadan movie. They have tailored it for Ramadan, subhanAllah. And you just go and are cooped up because, well, I need to bring, uh, you know, uh, Maghrib is in about, you know, an hour so I can watch this movie to bring uh, Maghrib with it. And then, okay, and then, you fasting? Who's fasting here? You're not benefiting from your fasting, are you? Or some people, some youth, some kids, who sleep the whole day, until almost Adhan. That's when they wake up, break their fast, and they say, oh yeah, I fasted today. MashaAllah, what kind of fasting is that, huh? I fasted sleeping. <laughs> what kind of fasting is that? May Allah forgive us, you know. And then they wake up and then spend the whole night, you know, doing stuff and going out. And then when do they go back to sleep? Fashar. Do they pray Fashar and sleep? La, they don't have time. They would just go do Husuhur almost before Fashar and then they go to sleep and wake up, you know, Asr time. Ooh, is that fasting? La, la, that's not, that's, that's, that, I don't know. I should make up some name with that, inshallah. Let me think of some name. But that's not fasting. So now is. Maghrib time. And then, as soon as you hear the adhan, the sunnah is to rush and break your fast. Rush and break your fast. Uh, I would like to wait until the adhan is over. No, then you'll not be following the sunnah. Because the Prophet ﷺ used to rush and he said it. In breaking the fast, as soon as you hear the adhan, break your fast. Watch the iftar. Hasten in breaking your fast. Make the du'a. As soon as you finish your du'a, you hear the adhan before you break your fast. You know, there's a du'a of the Prophet that he used to say, you know, when he, before he breaks his fast, and then bismillah, and then you eat and break your fast. What is the sunnah? Breaking the fast with water and some dates. This is how the Prophet used to break his fast. Water and date, or maybe date and milk if you like, but the sunnah is to break your fast with some water and some milk. I know some brothers from India and Pakistan, and you know, I love, they have this, uh, this chutney, I believe, or whatever, the salad, fruit salad, and they put spices in it, mashallah. You know, it's fruit, it's sweet, but they put spices in it. <laughs> so it's okay, maybe this is how they, because this is how they love, they break their fast with this uh, fruit salad. Okay, if you like that, do that. But why, why don't you just break your fast with water first? Huh? So that case, at least you can do the sunnah and then bring in the tradition of the fruit salad with the spices in it. I don't understand. I mean, the fruit is sweet, but you put spices in it. It's all right. Okay, uh, scratch that. And then after that, inshallah ta'ala, uh, you want to go and, and you know, do, your, do your salah. If you're, in, you know, if you're in the masjid, you go do your salah. Uh, the Salat al-Maghrib, and then you come back, inshallah ta'ala, and then if you want to have like some more, you know, like a dinner, a quick dinner, but remember, you don't want to fill yourself up. Why? Because you're going to go to the masjid and pray Isha and Taraweeh. So there's some people, mashallah, tabarakallah, you know, I know back like in Morocco and other countries, they have this, you know, table, mashallah, tabarakallah, huge, you know, all kinds of, you know, you know, food and, and mashallah, you know, pastries and soup and eggs and this and that and whatnot. And then you just, by the time you look at that table, you think like, you know, you've been fasting for years. And here is the table, as soon as you, you know, the uh, Mu'addin says, Allahu Akbar, and then people, they hasten, and then they just eat right and left and center, subhanAllah. And then, so how are you going to go and, and pray your salah? You're so full. Uh, are you going to concentrate in your salah? I don't think so. I don't think so. So you may want to, you know, you know take it easy. Eat something light. Why? Because you want to go back, inshallah ta'ala, and... Uh, get ready for Salat at taraweeh So uh, here you are, you prayed your Maghrib, you come back, maybe if you want to eat something light uh, with your family, inshallah ta'ala, and then what? Because you're busy. So what are you going to do now? Get ready for Isha. 
and go to the masjid and pray Isha. If you haven't gotten to the masjid, now it is your time to get your family together and go to the masjid and pray Isha with your family, with your wife, with your husband, with your kids to the masjid. Unfortunately, there's some people who, in fact, you know, uh, uh, I'm a counselor, you know, and, uh, here in Canada, and, uh, and, and I see things, you know, uh, when sometimes, you know, in the side of the masjid, you find some kids, their parents, with all the respect, they come, they dump them in the masjid, and then they leave, they go out shopping. And then here are the kids playing outside, people are praying the taraweeh, and the kids are playing outside, breaking windows and whatnot, playing soccer, playing things. And then when we go and we get them, where's your dad, where's your mom? Uh, 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 they just dropped me, they went out shopping and they dropped me here. Just like a masjid has become a, a daycare. La, you don't come, you bring your, your children and you put, let them sit next to you because you want to bring them to the masjid. Yes, do bring them. Do bring them to the masjid so they can see this beautiful environment of, of the malaika, of the angels with the Muslims coming together and praying. Especially for us, you know, who live, you know, uh, not in Muslim countries. This is the only time when we get to come together and see each other and pray with one another. And, you know, so bring your kids, inshallah ta'ala, and make them witness this beauty, this serenity, this beautiful atmosphere that happens in Ramadan. We pray the, you know, the Isha, and then after the Isha, we get ready, we pray Taraweeh. And after we pray the Taraweeh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, my dear viewers, what do we do? We go back home, and then we party all night, right? No, don't do that. You go back home and go to sleep. What? Naam. Why? Because you're busy. You have to wake up for Qiyam al-Layl tomorrow and for Suhoor. Remember? So, can I just go back and do a little talking with my family? Yes, okay, that's fine, inshallah ta'ala, but don't overdo it, right? You will go to sleep at 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning, and then you have Fajr at 4 or 5. How can you do that, Akhi? And then you have Suhoor. You have no time. You can't. So the Sunnah is as soon as, inshallah, you go back home, you pray Isha, and then Taraweeh, and then you go back home with your family. Uh, uh, if you want to drink some hot uh, milk or warm milk to, milk to help you go to sleep, inshallah, yeah, you can do that. And then go to sleep, make wudu and go and pray Torah and if you want to pray your witr, you can do so, or if you want to do it and, you know, before uh, uh, Fajr, that's in fact better. Why? Because that's the son of the Prophet والسلام, to wait for, uh, you know, to wait and not to pray witr until he prays Qiyam al-Layl and then he would have witr as his final prayer before Fajr. Uh, that's how the Prophet used to do it, right? So here, you go, you do your wudu, and then you go to, you know, you pray maybe Tulaqa before you go to sleep, and then you recite, you know, uh, Ayat al Kursi, you recite Amin al Rasul, Bima Unzi alayhi, Mirabi wal Mu'minun, you recite Qulu Allah Wahad, Qul Adub al Fala, Qul Adub al Nas. Why should you recite Ayat al Kursi before you go to sleep? Very, very important. Why? Here's the beauty. Because the Prophet said so in Bukhari, we have a hadith. What hadith? Narrated by Abu Huraira. Comes this man. Who's this man? Shaytan himself. He came, Abu Huraira was in fact the trustee. He had the Bayt al-Mal, you know, the bank, the money of the Muslims. He was the trustee there. And then came this man, an old man, who came in as a thief trying to steal from the money of the Muslims. Abu Huraira caught him. And then that man said, please let me go. I've got kids. I'm an old man. Let me go. And then he says, he let him go. He says, I will never come back again. So he let him go. And then he told the story to the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad says, he will come back. And then the next day, the same guy came back again, trying to steal. Abu Huraira called him, he says, this time I have to take you to Rasulullah. And then the man says, please, please let me go. I have kids, forgive me. I've got, you know, I need, I need help. I will never come back. And then he let him go. He told the Prophet, Abu Huraira told the Prophet the next day, the Prophet told him, he shall come back, he will come back. And the third day, the same guy came back again, and then Abu Huraira called him, he says, this time I'm taking you to Rasulullah. The man says, please let me go, and I shall give you an advice I have never given to anybody, you know, uh, and I will never give it to anybody after you. What advice? He says, before you go to sleep, recite Ayatul Kursi. Recite Ayatul Kursi, no shaitan will affect you that day. So he let him go. And then he went, he told the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says, he spoke the truth. Yes, he's a liar, but he spoke the truth. Oh, Abu Huraira, you know who that man is? That shaitan, that shaitan, the devil, Satan, he came to you and he gave you this advice. 
to recite ayat al-Kursi before you go to sleep. So, brothers and sisters, do not forget. This is so important. You make wudu and you recite ayat al-Kursi before you go to sleep. No shaitan will harm you that night. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah will appoint an angel to guard you the whole evening until you wake up. I'm not done, so don't go away because I still have some more things to go through, insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to practice and to convey. Stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.